My family lived in this village for centuries. We love this land and we will never leave it. There's overwhelming evidence to support that there was a serious Armenian genocide. The deliberate destruction of an entire people. Forcibly marching women and children to death. Parties at the time sending back cables, newspaper reports, eyewitnesses and so on. Turkey has gone around the world aggressively lobbying to make sure there are no references to the Armenian genocide. And why do they kill us? Just because we're not one of them. We're different. Armenian people have been running for generation after generation. At least a million and a half were killed. The most brutal forms of killing. Somebody shouted, open the door, we will kill all Armenian. Denial may continue for a hundred years or more afterwards. You can get away with murder, literally, and nothing will happen to you. Major powers, such as the United States, do not recognize the Armenian Genocide. Governments say we are doing this, but sometimes we have to do evil deeds because the end justifies the means. I have received more gag orders than any other person in the history of this country. I've been witnessing criminal activities which constitutes treason. Deny the facts, deny the statistics. Do you deny that the Armenian Genocide happened? I do deny that. So they kept beating him and he kept walking. I saw two people being killed. I saw this with my own eyes. How is 1.5 million deaths not a genocide? Is the Turkish lobby not allowing you to answer this question? I want people to know the truth. Hitler once famously said, who remembers Armenia? The answer is the whole world. That's who. This is an important question because Christian Armenians are being killed and persecuted to this day. It is a special night here in Hollywood and for humanity wherever you're at. We are at the premiere of a new documentary film called Architects of Denial. Genocide Denied is Genocide Continued. It is a film about the Armenian Genocide of 1915 and not only it is about the Armenian Genocide but it also touches upon the mass murders and prosecutions of Christians, of Greeks and Assyrians in that period. The film is produced by non-Armenian producers, Dean Kane and Montel Williams. And we'll get to talk to them very soon. With me is the co-chair of the Armenian Rights Watch Committee of the Armenian Bar Association, Garo Hazarian. Hi, such a pleasure seeing you at such a monumental day. Um, you have been very much involved with the film, and if you could please share with us what has been the challenges, what do you hope the film will resolve, and in which case would you think that the film has served its mission? Uh, well, uh, the title of the film uh, is more than fitting in light of the turn of events. I mean, uh, here we have a documentary that chronicles uh, man's inhumanity against man, takes us back a hundred years to the Armenian Genocide, and brings us all the way to modern day uh, conflict in uh, the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic, uh, where the Azeri aggressions are uh, nothing less and nothing short of um, attempted genocide, if you will, uh, going back from the Baku pogroms and all the way to the four-day war of a year ago. Uh, yet, uh, we have unfortunately encountered uh, both on uh, the West Coast as well as the East Coast um, uh, new architects of denial, if you will, uh, who have uh, uh, stood up against disseminating uh, this very timely uh, 
and very telling documentary about uh, violation of human rights and ongoing violations uh, which have reverberated not only uh, for us Armenians but also uh, for many others in Africa, the genocides of Darfur, Rwanda and others. Uh, we uh, were successful in large part to the community uh, uprising with ANCA, uh, Armenian Bar Association and many others who came together uh, in repelling such uh, uh, stand against the documentary at a place called Americana, where I um, recall vividly uh, letting everybody know that the last letter A in Americana stands for Armenians. I mean, here we are, a city uh, in Glendale, California, where half of the population is Armenian. Four out of five city council members are of Armenian descent. Uh, and here was this entity that was saying this is too political and it ought not be even advertised on uh, the property. Uh, fortunately, they have seen uh, that uh, the error of their ways was not going to be left unaddressed. Uh, the movie will be opening on, in Americana this weekend, I believe. Uh, and uh, on the East Coast, uh, we have witnessed uh, pushback from the Metropolitan Transit Authority of Washington, D.C., where they have refused advertising uh, of this documentary, uh, calling it too political. Uh, one only needs to go back a few months, and you will see that the metro subways, uh, the walls of the metro subways, and you'll see the buses uh, of the Transit Authority in Washington, D.C., uh, adorned with um, posters of uh, so-called alleged Kojali massacres and, and Azeri propaganda materials. And that has gone on for years in D.C., uh, in New York, uh, Times Square. Uh, so that's another, that's another issue that um, I'm confident uh, if and when uh, the collective of the Armenian-American community rises, uh, we will overcome that architect of denial on the East Coast and the nation's capital, no less. With me today is the executive producer of the film, Dean Cain. That's me. The original Superman <laughs> from on the television. But for us, in fact, for Armenians, you are the Superman in many sense because this is a film that has been produced by non-Armenians and it covers the atrocities of the Armenian genocide. But it goes beyond that. You know, it touches the Assyrians, it touches the Greeks. So, why did you decide to do it? Well, I'm a history major from college. I, I studied war and diplomacy, and um, I, I heard little bits and pieces, almost nothing, but little bits and pieces is about the Armenian genocide. Uh, it was something that I just sort of heard in passing. It wasn't anything that I studied. But I did study a lot of things in World War II. I studied the Holocaust and things of that nature. Um, and then some friends of mine, I met a number of people who were Armenian, and they would ask me, you know, we'd start talking about politics, or we'd start talking about um, different things in, in history. And they would they asked me, you know, they well, do you know about the Armenian genocide? And I, and I just didn't. And I was kind of embarrassed that I didn't have a clue. Um, so I, I actually went out and marched probably about 10 years ago on April 24th. Um, here in Hollywood and um, I, I started hearing stories so I read up on it a lot and I talked more about it and talked to more of my Armenian friends and then Montel Williams and I are great friends and we had always looked for a project to do together and we don't always agree politically but we agreed on this we agreed that genocide is wrong and, and that we could probably do something about it we could educate people by telling this story and perhaps maybe change some, uh, some of our uh, the way our government looks at this it's a very brave thing to do and so far what has been the challenges especially with the distribution and what do you hope to accomplish with this film? Well, I don't think it's a very brave thing that we've done, especially when you hear the stories of the bravery uh, of the Armenians who survived the marches into Aleppo and all the, I mean, all, all, you hear the horror stories and you think, wow, um, this isn't a brave thing for us to do. I mean, it's a nice, someone would say that, but we know it's not. We know we're just sort of in service to those who, whose memories and who, and, and whose families were just devastated by this. So we've run into some, we've run into some um, snafus, if you will. People didn't want us to, to uh, to uh, advertise, um, so we had to fight some some political battles. Um, they call this a political movie. It's not a political movie. That's what a, is this? This is historical fact. It's a human rights story. It's historical fact, and the only reason it hasn't been acknowledged is politics. Uh, and we we refuse to even accept that. It, it happened. It's so well documented. You can't deny it took place. Um, so we just can't wait for uh, the, the government to get on board. We were in we were in D.C. 
Washington, D.C. last week. I lobbied, you know, 20, 30 congressmen myself to get them to support a House resolution, which would, would it's a House resolution 220 right now that would actually recognize that in the House. And it's happened a number of times. Right. Um, it's almost, it's passed, it's almost passed, it's, it's stalled in the Senate. It's a matter of time before it happens. And, and then, fortunately, or hopefully, the United States will be on the right side of history. The truth is the truth, right? And it's so wonderful that, it's amazing that you said being a history major, you didn't know about it, and now you do. So, and what, what, what about the Turks on their side? You know, have you seen any attempt to stop the film? Well, listen, I think the Turkish people are wonderful people, and they have nothing to do with this. It's, it's the highest levels of government that have decided that this isn't going to be something that's going to be acknowledged. And that's, that's where the problem is. Um, we, I haven't personally seen any, any problems. I hope that doesn't happen. I hope that, that you know, it's something they can just accept and they can say, look, yes, this took place and, um, and, and we can all move forward. But it's, it's the kind of thing you can't, you can't deny it happened. You can't say it didn't happen. They do that, but that's just, as, to me, that's just, as crazy as, as, as denying the Holocaust. Film. Have you seen the film? And I have, I've seen portions of the film, clippets. I've not seen it all the way through. I've seen the, uh, the trailer and it's outstanding. And the whole message is just incredible. And what did you know of the Armenian genocide before the film? Before I went to Armenia, I knew nothing about the genocide. And I think that's the reason that I'm so excited about this film coming out, because it's all about awareness. I think tonight is a really important night because this documentary specifically shows the Armenian genocide. And it's a topic that really needs to be addressed and talked about because people today, as you know, are still denying that the Armenian genocide happened. And we can't let that continue. There's so much evidence that shows that the Armenian genocide that happened, so it blows my mind that people can deny that and uh, it's really important today because you see people denying the Holocaust which is crazy and I think that um, more people need to know about the genocide so that people can't deny genocide anymore because we don't want to see history repeat itself and we can't let this happen again and I have the pleasure of standing here with the executive producer of the film Montel Williams hello such oh, a thank you so much for having me congratulations on the opening night of the film and it's coming up in and major cities, right? Yes. And, and well, simultaneously on what we have here in the United States, which is on demand. So this is one of the first films to actually be released this way, where we're doing an, an in-theater release and people can sit in their living rooms and download at the exact same time, which is great. That is wonderful because, yeah. you know, if you, you know, especially I'm representing the Armenian community worldwide, like 10 million Armenians worldwide, the result of the genocide, in fact, and it, it will be available to them, right, via Amazon or Amazon, iTunes. You, if you, any one of your cable carriers, if they have the on-demand button, I don't care which one it is. I've done so many promos for so many of them that everybody's carrying it. So you just hit your on-demand, type in Architects of Denial, and it will pop up on the 6th. So in three days. Beautiful. Now let's get deep with this whole thing, okay? You know, you could have done so many things. I know you always care for different issues, and your show has been on air for 17 years, right? So you always say it's about what happened, why happened happened, but most importantly is a solution. Sure. What do you hope this film will resolve? I think what it, I hope it does what it did for me. When I was first introduced to the material, I have to tell you the honest truth. Mm -hmm. You know, I, a lot of people don't know this. I studied Russian at the Defense Languages Institute in America, but I knew nothing of the Armenian Genocide. Nothing. This, this material was introduced to me five years ago, and I, I felt like an idiot. And I feel I'm a pretty educated person and pretty knowledgeable. So the first thing I did was, no, come on. And I started digging in and I started looking. And then I realized that because of the denial of the Armenian Genocide, that's what let the, laid the ground and cut the furrows in the ground for the genocide in World War II, which has now laid the groundwork for the genocides that are being denied today. And I got angry, and I got really angry. And I and, and Dean, who have worked on lots of projects together and, and, and have, have talked about lots of different issues, politically, we aren't necessarily on the same page. That's what he said. But when it comes to hate, no one can't be on the same page. And when you really look at genocide, why genocide? Because the root of genocide is hate. That's where it comes from. Now, so how do we, you, you quoted me exactly, because on my show for 17 years, my mantra was, we don't care what happens, we try to figure out why it happens, and then we come up with solutions. But we will never solve genocide until we solve hate. Now, is hate 
an innate, genetic, inbred portion of all mankind? I don't know. I don't hate you. I'm looking at you. I don't hate you. My first look doesn't doesn't register dislike, discomfort. I don't understand why at a time in the world where man has come so far that we're about to relegate who we are to a robot or to a box that we can't even accept each other as fellow human beings. So I got this, I got involved in this because I want to stop hate. I think if I do one thing from now until the time that I die, that would be the most important legacy I'll leave behind, just helping to stop it. You have seen a lot going on in Hollywood, a lot of films coming in and out. What makes this one special? Well, um, I know a little bit about this film, I actually donated um, to it, and I think it's, it's really important because people uh, don't, they say that this did not happen, that the Armenian genocide did not happen, and um, so I think it's important for them to see this, and I think it's important for everyone, especially what's going on in this world today to make sure that they're aware of things like this so these things don't ever, 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 ever happen again. I think it's very important to use any platform that I have in order to spread awareness and I think that as we've seen from recent events in Vegas, history repeats itself and so I'm very excited to be here and um, you know, spread awareness. Oh my gosh, it is so moving. I'm going to start crying right now because I did not know. And now I know, and I will be telling all my friends because I'm not Armenian, but I think America should know, and especially the people that run this country. I think it was very powerful, very emotional to the point, and it's so relevant to the present day issues. So I was very impressed. I'm a little bit in shock because it's a subject matter that really hasn't been explored much in the U.S. press. Powerful. The reality that this is happening all around us all the time is um, excruciatingly painful and also urges us to really get involved and do something. It seems to go on. What is wrong with us? And we Americans who are so absolutely committed to freedom and liberty, why the hell aren't people speaking up more? And I guess it means that little people like all of us have to call, our congressmen have to call, our senators and say, speak up, speak up. If nothing else, speak up. You see the, the, the pain and the um, recollection of survivors of the genocide, um, but then also to see the connection between their experience and the experience of people who are suffering similar fates right now in, in Artsakh, for example. Um, to make the connection between the past and the present, I think, was a very, very important statement that this film makes that um, all people need to really understand. Because because when we commemorate the genocide, um, it's only partly about remembering and demanding justice for our history. It's also about preventing future atrocities and recognizing the connection between the lack of accountability for the past and what continues to happen in the present. The key thing about this documentary that's different from many other documentaries that we've seen over the years is not just doesn't talk about the past, it talks about the past and its continuation to the present and how genocide is continuing and there's a risk of genocide of the people in Artsakh, Nagorno-Karabakh, surrounded by uh, uh, Azerbaijan that's threatening constantly to wipe them out, to kick them out. So it's a very uh, contemporary subject rather than something that 100 years ago, which if you just do an old documentary 100 years ago, most Americans would have no interest on it. But if you show them something happening right now in their uh, own uh, day and time, they'll be much more interested knowing who are these people who are being persecuted and possibly killed today.
were part of the film when you were making it what was you know what were you ho hoping to accomplish and now with the first premiere what what do you think the feedback is and how far do you think a lot think of people see it and it's recognized for what it is that the uh, truth comes out and the uh, uh, the uh, denials are finished over why did you decide to be a part of this? Uh, I decided because uh, it's a, that's a good, good question. Uh, let me give you a very short version. Uh, I never knew my uh, grandparents because they were killed in the, in the Holocaust in the, outside uh, Austria and Czechoslovakia. So anything dealing with genocide is very in, in, important to, to me. I thought the film was an excellent representation of the realities both in Turkey and in Azerbaijan today, um, exposing denial of the Armenian genocide and exposing the inhumanities of the Republic of, or the dictatorship of Azerbaijan uh, is very important to today's reality and to also connecting the past with the future. Well, I learned a lot about the, the personally, the, the part of the 1990s and, and that aspect of history and the migration into Baku. Um, you know, every time I am around the community, I learn more, and tonight I, I learned a lot as the, to see how the pieces and the migration fit together and just to, to see a people under siege for, you know, 100 years. It's, it's just very powerful and, you know, I don't like the way folks in Washington treat the Armenian uh, people and treat the genocide with denial. And it was a very powerful statement that, you know, if we don't, as a country, recognize it, it's going to repeat itself, and if Turkey doesn't do the right thing, it just gives a license to others to do the same atrocities. So, well, Growing up Armenian, I've seen a lot of genocide films, and um, I, f I, I didn't really think that this was going to be different, but it's greatly different because it connects so many things that I wasn't even aware of. Um, and it made me really angry because, you know, you think of America and you think of Americans uh, and the society in general as, as being aware and knowledgeable. And then you see these politicians who are extremely aware, who just ignore. And it's so irritating to watch that. And I think a lot of people will definitely get that same feeling watching this. Architects of Denial will open in movie theaters this Friday, October 6, 2017, in 10 major cities nationwide. And it will be also available on demand via Amazon, iTunes, Fandango, and more. So watch it, share the truth about the Armenian genocide, because genocide denied is genocide continued. My family lived in this village for centuries. We love this land and we will never leave it. There's overwhelming evidence to support that there was a serious Armenian genocide. The deliberate destruction of an entire people. Forcibly marching women and children to death. Parties at the time sending back cables, newspaper reports, eyewitnesses and so on. Turkey has gone around the world aggressively lobbying to make sure there are no references to the Armenian genocide. And why do they kill us? Just because we're not one of them. We're different. Armenian people have been running for generation after generation. At least a million and a half were killed. The most brutal forms of killing. Somebody shouted, open the door, we will kill all Armenians. Denial may continue for a hundred years or more afterwards. You can get away with murder, literally, and nothing will happen to you. Major powers, such as the United States, do not recognize the Armenian Genocide. Governments say we are doing this, but sometimes we have to do evil deeds because the end justifies the means. I have received more gag orders than any other person in the history of this country. I've been witnessing criminal activities which constitutes treason. Deny the facts, deny the statistics. 
you deny that the Armenian genocide happened? I do deny that. So they kept beating him and he kept walking. I saw two people being killed. I saw this with my own eyes. How is 1.5 million deaths not a genocide? Is the Turkish lobby not allowing you to answer this question? I want people to know the truth. Hitler once famously said, who remembers Armenia? The answer is the whole world. That's who. This is an important question because Christian Armenians are being killed and persecuted to this day.